second year, ever since you've joined here in Illinois, back in the Big Ten, has it just kind of felt like home for you? It has. It's, uh, you know, my home state, obviously. Um, grew up in the state, played high school football in the state of Illinois, and uh, very excited to be back. Even at my other stops along the way, I'd been heavily involved in recruiting the state of Illinois, and my, my whole family is still here uh, up in the Quad City area, so it's, it's definitely a homecoming in a variety of ways. Obviously one of the toughest conferences, but you know how to win here. How much does that toughness and the tough schedule make everybody better? Well, twofold, right? I've been in this conference as a player, as an assistant, as a coordinator, and a head coach. So I have a lot of experience. Um, I have more Big Ten titles, I think, than any other coach in this conference. Um, uh, and I think the, the, the thing that really makes it come full circle for me is even though we've had some expansion and, and, and have obviously gone down that path in a couple different directions, it's still the Big Ten, right? It's still the Midwest, and a lot of the same things carry over every time. Since you've been here, what's something you're maybe most proud of? that you've instilled in this program uh, through a year and, and getting ready for year two? You know what? I, I like the way our guys mentally approach things. I like the demeanor. I like the attitude. I like the uh, just basically the way they approach the, the game, right? Like to respect the game. Sometimes I think kids in this recruiting process, they get a little bit wild with uh, maybe some things that aren't as important as the game and learning it. Um, I really like the demeanor of our football team. On the flip side, what's been the biggest challenge for you so far? Yeah, I think anytime you come into an organization that had uh, has struggled for so long, um, anytime you come in and people that have been here before, sometimes they're not open to change, right? And and like, listen, I'm not going to just change something to change. If I change something, it's because I think it'll help us win. And sometimes people don't want to change, right? Like, uh, people rely on comfort. People rely on what they do. People in their jobs and the way they've been doing them, sometimes they don't want to change the things we've asked them to do. And and I think that's been probably the most frustrating at times, but on the same account, have a tremendous amount of support from Josh Whitman, our AD, and our administration to get to where we want to be. We're at St. Louis Station. St. Louis one of the biggest metropolitan areas around here. How big, how important is it to recruit St. Louis going forward for this program? Absolutely huge. I think one of the things that when we first got here, we said, okay, how do we want to go about this and what do we need to do? And um, to recruit the state of Illinois is first and foremost, right? Uh, and, and we've done that in full, full fledged uh, as hard as we possibly can. But then Corey Patterson, who's a, a native of St. Louis, but also relied on my experiences. I've recruited St. Louis for a long time. When I was at Iowa as a player, I played with a lot of guys from St. Louis. Uh, and that's kind of carried my thoughts into where we are today, really. Um, St. Louis, because of its proximity, because of the talent, and because of the uh, uh, access to that in a high school program, it has to be priority for us. Yeah. You won't play them for a couple more years, but the other team in proximity to St. Louis over in Missouri recruits that city pretty hard. Is there any bit of a recruiting rivalry starting with you guys? Well, I think so. I think Missouri, uh, Illinois has always you know, been that way uh, through basketball, through football, through uh, whatever sport you want to name. I think just because of the proximity and because of, of the, uh, you know, the storylines around recruiting, that goes, that goes without saying. Um, but I believe it will probably get ramped up a little bit more when it obviously becomes a, a game that we play every year. Um, give me a thought or two about Isaiah Williams. He's our St. Louis guy that yeah. we like to watch a lot. Is it just as simple as getting the ball in his hands and let his talent take over? Well, Isaiah's a very talented player, but he's also a very talented mind. Um, he's obviously elected as a captain with uh, 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 the respect and the, um, and the um, uh, rapport that he has with his teammates. It's easy to see why Isaiah has been voted into that position. He's got great leadership traits. Played quarterback for a long time, right? So he has those innate qualities of leadership that are real. And then as a coach, I've witnessed and seen him grow literally on a daily basis. Uh, his, his ability to play the game has jumped up to another level, but his leadership skills are through the roof. Um, Keith Randolph's another guy I'm, I'm going to talk to from down in our area. How much are you going to lean on him on the defensive line this year? Keith's a very talented player. He's a big guy that can run. He's athletic. He's got great demeanor. Uh, the thing I love about Keith, I think he's just scratching the surface of what he can be. He works every day. He's got a great personality, um, always in a thirst for knowledge. Um, I think he's going to be a guy that takes one of those big steps this year in the conference. Five and seven last year, some big wins mixed in there. Just what's the excitement level around this program right now, and what's your message to the guys on expectations? You know, what? I, I tell our players, I, I, I hope I have high expectations, but I hope theirs are even higher. Um, if they have the highest expectations, that walk this earth as players, we're going to be in a good position, right? And and you have to make them understand and expect to believe that that'll happen, and hopefully that'll uh, transform itself into more wins. 
last thing. Obviously, you already mentioned conference uh, expansion and realignment, big news with the two California schools coming eventually. Just what are your thoughts on, on kind of this landscape of yeah. college football right now and where we might be heading? Well, I think, you know, three things, right? The NIL world first, right? That really kind of changed the dynamics of college athletics in, in a big way uh, with football. Uh, conference expansion, right? So I remember being in this league when we added Penn State, right? Then we added uh, Nebraska, and then we added Maryland and, and Rutgers. And now obviously we're adding uh, UCLA and USC. Just brings tremendous value to the conference. So the expansion is good, but then really just college football expansion, right? The playoffs, um, uh, multi-million dollar, uh, billion dollar uh, TV rights deals, right? So the game is changing around us. What we got to do is be able to change with the game. Last thing I just thought of, we got we're going to have a lot of Illinois fans watching yeah. this back in St. Louis. What's your pitch to them? Come up here, watch a game yeah. this year. What's your pitch? You know, no doubt last year the two best games we played were in front of the two of the largest crowds. We played in front of 110,000 at Penn State. Our guys played their tails off, nine overtimes, got the win. We played at Minnesota in front of a sold-out crowd there, and uh, the environment was just very, very special. So love to have you here. I think we're, we're trying to do everything we can, giving back to the community to get the community involved with us here at Memorial. and. Anything we can do to make that stadium louder, I think will benefit everybody.